Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers. This morning I'm looking at a difficult subject and one that is emerging as a major factor that we have to look at within society in the 21st century. The book is called Dementia and the Law and it's this book here. It's from Jordan's. It's a new book. You can see what it shows there. In the back you've got a useful um, detail of what's in it. There's a forward by Mrs Justice Thies which is extremely helpful and there are a lot of people who've written this book. I'll, I'll hold it up and I'll read the names. Um, Tony Harrop Griffiths, uh, Jonathan Cowan, Christine Cooper, Rhys Haddon, Angela Hodes, Victoria Flowers and Stephen Fuller. So it's a fairly substantial number of people who've been involved. It's available as an e-book and uh, extremely worth worthwhile. Um, it's running to about 500 odd pages. There's a very important detailed index at the back. The structure of the book is some useful legislation, obviously specifically the Mental Health Act itself and the Mental Capacity Act of course is, is also in there, there. And then the body text is useful because it's got paragraph numbering so it's easy to navigate. You've also got the footnotes so if you're looking for specific case examples you know where to find them quite quickly. Obviously you've got standard um, cases, the, the leading authorities in this area which are well covered as, uh, in addition. For instance, let's take chapter 2. There's no index at the front of the chapter but it goes straight into the narrative quite quickly and um, I think it sets out pretty well what, what is being um, dealt with. You've got for instance a very useful uh, setup about um, called a called guardians which are which is there right at the beginning then you've got the contents which is again fairly detailed you can see it answers all a lot of the questions and it gives I think a lot of comfort and advice for um, you know what is a very difficult subject and the introduction I think is well worth reading if you have time plus of course as I mentioned Lucy Thies and her um, forward I've been touched by this book. I think it's an important uh, book and a great contribution to what is a very difficult area for everybody to deal with because you're dealing quite often with your nearest and dearest and uh, there are quite a lot of things that have to be done sometimes, very much things you don't really want to deal with. Uh, the title we've given the review which is on the web and in the journals is A Clear Accessible Examination of legal issues relating to dementia and that's what this book is about and as I say it's more than that because it's something that anybody who's facing this uh, and you will know what I mean by this um, anybody facing this sort of problem the dilemma of dementia is uh, it's something that will be of help to you um, this is what we say anyway in this multi-authored work of reference from Jordan's the combined expertise of no less than seven specialist barristers from Field Court Chambers is placed at your disposal. All the better actually when it comes to helping you increase your understanding of the legal issues relating to dementia. A perpetually delicate and difficult subject and that's what it is. Uh, and as I mentioned uh, writing in the Ford, Mrs Justice uh, Thies from the family division reiterates the uncomfortable truth that quote a significant number of people in the UK have dementia one in three people over 65 will develop it and those figures are really quite startling if you think about it as the medical problems linked to dementia have become increasingly widespread there are now of course more widely known and understood issues than uh, the consequent legal issues of the past so it's a bit of a developing area if I can put it that way in more than one sense. So the book's therefore a timely statement and very much needed. It sets out the law in a straightforward and accessible manner and it addresses a number of key issues, often urgent key issues that the family and, and advisors have to look at. Let me give you some examples. Uh, when data protection and best interests need to be considered, who has permission to access the information? It's a perennial problem and one that can cause a lot of offence and I'm sure some of you may well be aware. What is the legal approach to issues relating to the deprivation of liberty? Again, keeping people against their will, a big problem, how far can you go? 
Do people with dementia have the right to refuse medical treatment and care at any time? Another difficult question and it does attempt to answer it. Under the legal framework we currently have, what are the rights of those caring for people with dementia? These of course are only a few of the dementia related difficulties which the book discusses in detail but I think you'll find it helpful. The book goes on to focus on the property and financial affairs of the person with dementia, including powers of attorney, their obligations and duties, and the legalities involved, an important area and a delicate area. The final section at the back deals with disputes that may often arise and their possible remedies, for example remedies in the court of protection, and I think it's worth bearing that in mind because of the publicity recently uh, attached to this particular court. Covering England and Wales with additional reference where uh, Wales um, has slightly different laws, the book deals sequentially with powers under the Mental Health Acts and the Mental Capacity Act. And of course these pieces of legislation are set out under the statutory materials which are at the back of the book, together with the National Assistance Act 1948. And the book's been written in the spirit of compassion and understanding as well as rigorous analysis. And it's to be commended in our view not just to legal professionals but to carers, those working with people with dementia in the NHS, local authorities and care homes. And relatives of people with dementia I think will find the information advice offered of considerable help and benefit. And uh, probably researchers especially will appreciate the extensive and minutely detailed table of contents as well as the index which is at the back, the two appendices and the 20 pages or so of tables of cases, statutes and statutory instruments. Um, if I can conclude by saying it's an indispensable work of reference really for all those who deal with legal matters relating to dementia and as I say it's available as an e-book. The publication date is the early part of 2014. There's the book again. You can see what it's got. I mean that's actually complaints about the NHS in Wales in particular. So do remember where your jurisdiction is. Um, financial deputies are dealt with because obviously again it does get into the detail what the problems are. I'd like to thank the uh, contributors, the, the people who've written this book, because I think it's a very important contribution to what is a, a really difficult problem we're going to face. It's a bit of a time bomb, frankly, and it's something we've got to be aware of and we have to deal with. So thank you to Jordans um, and thank you to all concerned for this most useful contribution. Bye-bye.